Okay, folks, we are now recording this. Welcome to today's uh, Open Forms Refresher Training. Uh, so this one we will run. Uh, we run each month. We have a refresher course where uh, people can see how some bits of Open Cities or Open Forms works. Maybe since the last time they uh, they started working with us, uh, some things have changed. For this session today. We'll be having a look. We'll, I'll give you a bit of information about how uh, to find where you are inside Open Forms and just orient you as to where some of the bits of the system live. Um, then we'll take you through the creation of a, a fairly simple form that demonstrates quite a lot of uh, the functionality within Open Cities and some of the advanced bits and pieces inside Open Forms. Um, and then we'll look at setting up a, a workflow that attaches to that form itself to manage some of the work that comes out of that form. So we'll run through all of that in this hour today, and hopefully it'll give you uh, some good information around how some bits and pieces of the Open Cities platform works. So first and foremost, I'm sure all of you are aware you can log into the Open City, uh, Open Form system here. Now, once you're inside the admin interface, what you will see running across the top of the screen um, is really a lot of bits and pieces related to the system. Now, depending on the access, there are three levels of user inside Open Cities, uh, uh, Open Forms. We're sort of up to four now, um, in that you can be either an admin user, you can either have admin access, reporter access, or author access in the tool, and that does allow you to uh, do slightly different things inside. Open Cities, and it does allow you to uh, see a few different areas within the system. There are also a couple of different plans inside Open Cities. So uh, the last bit of today's session, where I'm taking you through the workflow, is only going to be available to uh, people with an admin uh, with a enterprise subscription to Open Forms. But once you have logged into the Open Form system, running across the top, you'll see there are four main areas. You've got your forms. You've got the admin area. Uh, you've got connectors and then if you are a reviewer in the system with access to these new workflow uh, functionalities you will also have a review tab in there but basically your forms area is going to include all of the forms inside your open cities and they can uh, inside your open forms going to say that a lot um, inside your open forms and they can be arranged then into workspaces so someone who is an admin inside open forms has the ability to create these workspaces these are mm, easiest way to think about them is folders inside open city open forms that allows you to arrange folders into groups a typical case sort of that i've got represented here is something where you might divide them by different departments and then give different users the ability to create and edit forms inside those different departments so inside the admin tab you'll need to have admin you'll need to be an admin on these ones what you'll see is this allows you to manage users and it'll show you what users you have and what roles they have inside the system so at the moment i've got author reporter admin and workflow reviewer roles assigned to mine this admin area is really a bundle of central bits and pieces that are available for uh, people across the organization so it also lets you do some things like um, set the defaults for different buttons within the system, change the stylings of a theme inside the system, set up some centrally reusable bits of information. So you can set up things like lists that allow you to uh, give people creating forms a set of reusable options inside, uh, inside open forms. You can also set up a field set, which will give people the ability to uh, create a set of questions inside open forms that are reusable in there so you might have a set of something like contact details and then there's also some other bits and pieces that you can configure to like give yourself some reports based on it um, how and when you want to see who gets what notifications and also as i mentioned set up those workspaces that are really uh, looking at being an area where people can work inside open forms so the admins will also have access to a connector screen and this is where you can hook open forms up to different services so you might be setting up some kind of data connection you might just be linking it up to google so you can track the analytics on your form um, if you've gone down the path of integrating quite heavily with uh, other systems you might be using uh, the web api um, and a lot of you are likely to be using the payment gateways. So this is where you can go in and set up one of our pre-built payment gateways. We won't take you through them today because there's a lot of information and that's quite specific to the different payment gateways. But needless to say, this is where an admin can come in, set up that payment gateway, and then your users can start adding uh, payment fields into their forms and, and nominating the payment gateway that they want it to go through. 
The last section review we'll have a look at a little bit later today. But then also sitting over here on the far right, you've got the insight sections section you've always got, which will tell you just a little bit of uh, information about your forms inside the system. You've then also got the help area. So if you click on that one, it's going to open up the help center for open forms and that'll have a heap of information in there. One of the things to note about that help center link is that it is actually context sensitive. So it will look at that, look at the page that you're actually on and try to direct you to the most relevant uh, help page inside that system. So because I was uh, last on that uh, payment gateway form, it's taken page, it's taken me across to the payment gateway section inside that, that help center. But you can always search or find other topics within that help center. And lastly, you'll have your account. Now, if you click on the little, angle, the little uh, arrow next to that, you'll see a bundle of little different uh, bits of information there. You can go ahead and update your profile, change your password and a few bits and pieces like that. Um, potentially, if you're uh, depending on your level of access, you may see some additional things in there as well. But the focus of today is really going to be on this form section and how you go about creating a, a nice little form inside that section to allow people to uh, interact in a smooth and uh, well-managed way within, uh, within a form. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through creating basically a fairly simple uh, damaged bin form. As I said at the outset, I'm going to make it so that it demonstrates quite a few of the, the sort of neat little features that you have access to inside open forms. So it might give you some ideas and, and show you where you can look for a few other bits and pieces within the system. So firstly, I'm going to switch myself into the workspace that I want to be in, which is going to be our waste and recycling workspace. And then I'm going to create a form here, which is going to be my damaged bin form. Once I click create, it's going to go away and it's going to load up this form builder tool sitting here. So leaving aside the, the broad areas of the uh, navigation structure at the top now, what we've got here inside it is our form builder. Down the bottom, you'll see a number of buttons. Now, because this is an enterprise account, it does have the ability to save and preview and keep stuff versioned. Um, some of you may be on, on uh, non-enterprise versions of open forms where you've basically got the ability to make changes and publish, but you might see some slight differences down here um, to what you see as I'm working on it today. But really looking at this uh, forms page, this forms builder page here, We've got sort of five areas or six areas across the top here. We've got the build where you actually go in and create the form itself. I'm going to just save this one before it starts to complain at me too much. You've got the settings area where you can go in and you can adjust a lot of the settings for this form. So some of those settings that we saw in that admin section, um, if you need to overwrite them on a form by form basis, you can do that through the setting. It's also where you might be setting up some of the bits and pieces as to what happens when someone actually goes in and submits a form. What happens next as far as the system is concerned? If you're an admin, if you're an enterprise client, you'll have this workflow area where you can go in and actually set up some of the back end st stages that happen after someone submits the form. What happens through it? And we'll take you through that on this form today as well. You'll have the responses area where you can basically see everything that's been submitted to this form that's in there and you can go in and you can uh, find find uh, forms that have been filled in in the past. You'll have an analytics area which gives you just some details about the form as to uh, how long it's taking people to fill it in, how many people are completing it and, and bits and pieces like that. And then if you are an enterprise client with access to versioning, there'll be a history tab here that shows you all the different versions of this form that have been created and worked on uh, as people go across it. Now today we'll spending, be spending a lot of time in this build area and we'll be spending a lot of, oh well, a bit of time in this workflow area. But really when you're in the build area, what you've got then running down the left hand side is a number of uh, form fields that you can drop into that into that system. You'll also have a little tour down here if you want to see some of the features that are available. But basically, these are your questions. These are the bits and pieces that you're going to want to drop into this form sitting on the right hand side here. So actually, so you've got your basic question types in here. I won't run through all of these. There's information in the help desk about what each of them does, but a lot of them are fairly self-explanatory and you'll see there is some help text that pops up next to them. If you're just looking for someone to type in, type in some words, 
you drop in a text field. If you need a number from them, put in a number field. To give them some options to select, you're really looking at this drop down, this checkbox, and this radio button. So the way it typically works is a radio button will give them one option to one option to pick from or will allow them to pick one of the options inside the inside the question a checkbox will allow them to tick multiple and a drop down will give them that uh, that sort of drop down look and feel where instead of having uh, all the options listed out they can select it from a drop down they can select multiple if they like by holding down control as they as they select an option um, that drop down is typically useful if you've got a, a very long list or a list of very long options so the classic case where you'll see drop downs is things like a, a language selection area where you're going in and actually picking which language that you want to go in and create. You've also then got an advanced questions area, area. So these ones are a little bit more complicated to sort of create inside the system um, and do a little slightly different thing. So if this is where you'll go, if you want to say add a file upload and we'll be adding one of them in today to allow people to uh, put content into the system. It also allows you to add calculations where you do a certain amount of recordings, uh, sorry, a certain amount of uh, manipulation with figures or options inside the system. You can drop in a system, you can use the location if you've set it up to, to link into uh, Google Maps and things like that. You can drop in a field that allows them to select a location. If your admin has set up a payment gateway, you can drop in a payment gateway field. Uh, that field sets area that I pointed out in admin where you can include a set of uh, a preset set of questions that people can drop in useful for things like maybe contact details or dropping in a, a few specific questions that you know are going to be reused across a range of forms. You can drop that in in that field set and this is where someone can add that in. And lastly, you'll have this layout area. Now this is where you can basically drop in things that aren't really uh, questions inside the form at all. So they're not getting feedback from the from the person completing the form. This area really allows you to break your form up into questions. It allows you to drop a block of content into the site and uh, in, into the into the form. It allows you to drop an image and drop a video into that form as well. Now, some of the neat things associated with those though that layout section is that you can apply some of the uh, show hide logic that I'll run you through today to add a section level, which allows you to go in and create a bundle of questions that are shown or hidden based on previous answers. Um, and you can do the same thing with those other content blocks in there as well. So with content with the image or video, you can set them up to only display um, if someone inside the system is actually uh, is actually selecting the right options where you want them to see that information. So how do we go about actually adding them into the form? Well, the easiest way is then just to click on one. If you click on an option in, in, either, in any of those side menus, it's going to drop it in at the bottom of your form. So if, you, if you're looking to set up this form, we might initially set this one up as uh, bin details. And we might say, yeah, look, the most obvious thing we want to know is for the person to describe the damage. Now we might at this point go, oh, actually, we probably should have asked what type of bin it was first. Maybe that's something that uh, maybe that's something that we want to know early on. And so to that, we might want to drop a radio button in. Now, if I just hit that radio button, it's going to drop it down here underneath that, but maybe we want it to come in first. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab it and we're going to drag it above. We're going to ask, what type of bin? And we might say general waste, green waste. Recycling. And the other thing we might want to know is just a just a little bit more detail of what the actual issue or, or how the issue came about before we ask them to describe the damage. So I'm actually going to drop another one in here called uh, let's just call it what happened to your bin. And we can have a few options inside here. We can say it was uh, damaged through use, damaged 
the truck. Or we can say it is missing, just if, in case they've completely missed it. Now, some of this example will be more realistic than other bits of it. Um, there's, of course, nuances that you might want to do about providing people with a different form. But in order to demonstrate some of the functionality of open forms, I'm going to go with these three options um, and say, hey, this one's completely missing. So in this situation, we might have the situation where uh, each of these three situations are handled, handled slightly differently. So if it's damaged through use, we might send someone out to refix it. If it's damaged by the truck, perhaps we want them to report it to the um, report it to the firm that that is the the waste collection has been outsourced to um, and if it's completely missing we might actually want more details from them if it's completely missing they have to fill in a stat deck they have to provide a, a um, provide information that that they've reported it to the police through a, a upload a police report or something like that so in order to indicate that what we might want to do is drop in just some content and say if your bin is missing, you must provide a stat deck or a police report. And then we might give them the option to actually include a file upload field inside there. And we might just call that reporting documents. Now, of course, these, th this little bit of information, really useful if people have a missing bin. Not so useful if it's just been damaged. They don't need to know that. They don't need to upload any supporting documents. And this is where we might look at actually adding in some uh, of that, uh, what is termed smart logic inside Open Cities. And in order to access that, you can go into the question itself via that little settings wheel, go into display logic, and say, show or hide this form based on display logic. So if I go in here now, I can say, all right, I want to, I only really want people to read this if they're reporting their bin missing. And so in order to do that, I can go into this display logic and say, yep, I want to show or hide it based on smart logic. I can go in here and say, all right, when the bin details section inside that, what happened to your bin question, if that's equal to the bins missing, that's when I want this particular form to, sh this particular question to show up. So I can click save on that, and then I can do exactly the same thing here. So they only really need to provide the supporting, these supporting documents if the reporting had been missing rather than uh, rather than uh, just damaged. And so now I've got a neat little form that's basically going to provide a little bit of extra context here. Now, of course, describe the damage to the bin, also not appropriate if it is missing. So we don't want them to see that one if that bin's actually missing. So I can go in as well and actually say, show or hide this based on smart logic, add a scenario. And what I want to do is in fact, hide this one in the circumstance where they actually pick, whoops, wrong question. What happened to your bin is equal to missing. So if I now just quickly save and preview that damaged bin form, what you'll see is it's asking me these questions. I can go in and say, yes, it's a green waste. It was damaged through use. It's not going to change. Damaged by the truck. It's not going to change. Missing. All right. It gives me that extra little bit of information to say, hey, you've got to provide a stat deck or a police report. And it gives me this supporting documents field where I can actually upload a file into the system. So we're starting to make quite a user friendly uh, form here. So now what we might be looking at is saying, all right, well, if it's damaged through use, then we need to, then we're going to have to book in the repair team. If it's missing, we're going to have, and they've given us a good stat deck or a good police report, we're going to have to replace it. But if it's damaged by the truck, we want to actually report it. We want them to actually report it to the company that manages the trucks rather than the, rather than the uh, waste department here at council. Obviously not something that we'd necessarily recommend from a customer service perspective, but just to do, give you some demos of, of some of the stuff you can do. What I'm now going to do is drop in a new section here. I'm going to say damaged by truck. And I'm going to drop in a block of content here as well. 
And what I'm going to say is if your bin was damaged by the waste truck, please report it to bins are us Inc. on let's just say four 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 four. So this is a whole new section for if they've filled in that that uh, filled in this thing and they're reporting that the the uh, that the bin has been damaged by the truck. What we want to do is similar to as we did with these questions. We only want to show this section up if they report it as actually uh, if they're reporting it as damaged by the truck. And if they do that, what we can do is we can go inside here, go inside the section settings. So you'll see I've got this uh, content block here that has its own set of settings, and that's where I did the high, the show hide logic for these questions. But I'm actually going to do it at the section level here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say this whole damaged by truck section. I want to add a new scenario into this. I only want to show this this section if in the bin data bin details area they have picked um, what happened to your bin if they've picked damaged by the truck so I'm going to add that scenario in here but the other thing that I can do if I set it up as a section is that I can make this a stop section within the form so I can go in and say at this point if it matches this if it matches this scenario we want them to see this information that says ring this number, but we don't want them actually reporting it through to us directly anymore because we've ascertained from their answers that it's not something that we're going to be able to help them with. We don't need to receive this form. So having made those changes in here, if I now save and preview this form, what you will see is it's got my same general questions as I had before. I can still pick general waste. I can still say it's a missing bin and it will hide that question and it's going to give me that supporting documents field and you'll see it still says submit down the bottom there. However, if I pick this damaged by the truck option, you'll see that it then gives me a continue button rather than a submit button and that's because it's then going to take me along to this next question where it says, hey, this bin was damaged by the, if your bin was damaged by the waste truck, please report it to this company, etc. And it won't let them actually go that full way through and say submit this form all the way into, uh, into council. We've identified that this is something that you, you might need to talk to a different organization about. So it just gives you that ability to sort of get some questions, get some information out of them and then sort of lead them to where they need to need to go without having to fully get to the sort of full on submission point with that form. But the other thing to note then is that with this smart logic applied to a section, maybe what I actually want to do is ask a bundle more questions all related to the to the nature of it being damaged by the truck. I can just drop extra questions into this section here and they're all going to show up or hide based on that that selection up here of what that uh, what that form might be uh, running across the top there just some other sort of neatening up that I might want to do so I might decide that actually if they've reported it damage to damage to the truck then they're not really we don't really want them to fill this field in either so I might go in and add a second scenario to this one in the display logic that says hide it if it's equated to mini missing. Or we can go in and say if in the bin details, what happened to your bin is equal to damaged by the truck. And then that's just going to make it a little more user friendly for the people that are reporting that. They're not going to fill in a, a detailed description of how that uh, how that uh, how that bin got damaged, then get to the next thing that says, actually, we're not going to do anything with this. Just call this number. They won't even sort of be able to fill in that form if all it's going to say is is uh, ring this number instead of filling in this form. So you can add in multiple scenarios in there to, to sort of hide more of that information and sort of more customize that that journey from people. Some of the other things. So if we now save and preview that. you'll see that damage by the truck is also dropping off that question, but now giving us that continue option. One of the other things that we might just neaten up on this form is we're looking at this and we're saying, hey, we want them to provide us, uh, describe the damage of the bin. 
if I go and say save and preview on that, you'll see this describe the damage of the bin. They might want to be actually writing quite a bit and a single line of text is looking a little uh, short and a little less useful for them. All of the questions inside the system will in fact have uh, their own settings wheel here. And what we might be wanting to do is instead of going to that display logic tab, we might be looking at some of these other settings, some of these basic uh, field settings. Now these different field settings are available for the different question types in the system. So you might be able to do some neat things depending on what type of question you've dropped in there. For this one where it's a text box, if I know it's going to be more than a single line of text, I might want to go in and say actually give them a, a larger area to type within. And if I wanted to put in some placeholder text or a character limit, I can go in here and as well and do that. You can also go in and make it a required field. So that one's pretty much available on every question type inside the system. You can go in and say, yes, someone has to answer this in order to proceed. Um, where that gets interesting is then also inside the display logic. So if the display logic is hiding a required field, it's not going to cause any issues for them. They're not going to have to fill in a field. That they never get the opportunity to fill in. You can still make fields that are, that are potentially hidden required fields within the system. So just for, the, just for the sake of it, let's preview that and have a look. Yep, it's gone in, it's created a, uh, it's given them a bit more space to sort of type that information in there as well. So look, this form's starting to take shape. It's It's got a nice flow to it. People fill in a few bits of information that directs their attention a little bit as to uh, what information they need to provide us, depending on what happened. And we've stopped them from filling in this form if it's just been damaged by the truck and it's not something that council's going to be able to action at all. We've been helpful and directed them to where they should go, but we're not getting a, a sort of a whole heap of submissions that we can't actually action that we then have to process through our records management system and send out a formal response to and things like that. We're sort of stopping a lot of that in its tracks. What we now want to look at is, well, what happens with this form from here? Now, for those of you that are in, uh, for those of you that are, that are on a, a sort of non-enterprise plan, likelihood is you'll be heading into this settings area and looking at this responses area. So inside this settings area, there's a lot of uh, a lot of settings that you can go through and adjust for a form. Uh, responses is really looking at what happens after that forms come in. So you can send emails back to people. Uh, you can say, sorry, you can send the responses that come in just as an email attached to someone within your organization to action. So this is where you can go in. You can start to drop in the email address of the people that are going to action this form put in a useful subject line and put in the body of an email. Now inside that body, the easiest way to get everything is to just drop in this all submitted data field. And that's just going to populate a table inside the, in the, inside the email with uh, all the fields filled in based on the submission. And that gets sent through to the address above. But you do have the ability inside the system to pick out individual answers. So you can customize the, the sort of layout or the format of this um, in some interesting ways when it's sending through to people. You've also got the ability to say, yep, we just want to include a PDF copy of what's been submitted as well. And we want to attach the uploaded files on that one as well. So that's going to send through, uh, provided the files are small enough. Now, mail clients will often block or stop large attachments, as many of you may know if you've tried to send an email um, with some large images attached to it. Uh, what we don't want the what we don't want happening is that when you submit a form, uh, you'd usually get the results in email then you don't because they uh, don't because there's one that takes it takes the file size over the limit that your mail client can handle um, and you've got no idea that this submission was even attempted so what we'll generally do is if it starts bumping up to that 10 megabyte limit um, those files will be removed to make sure that you get that notification to say yes there has been a submission to this you might have to go into open forms to actually get that file if it's too large The other bit in this area that you might want to look at, and you may want to look at even if you are uh, using the enterprise uh, level and, and the workflow that we're going to look at shortly, um, is this after so this respondent submits a response section. This is where you can go in and, and the most common use will be to set up a success message. So this allows you to basically uh, control what happens when someone finally does uh, go all the way through and click this submit. I'm just going to have to prove I'm not a robot. 
you'll see you get this thank you message. So if you do nothing, you're going to get something generic like this that just says thank you for the completing of the form and tells them a receipt number. Through this after respondent submits response section, you can again go in and customize the response that the, the, the response that will appear on that page. And you can again go in here and actually use some of the fields from the from the form itself. So you can be very friendly. If you've asked them for their name, you can go in and say thanks. Insert that that sort of name uh, shortcut. Um, you'll hear back from us in thank you for requesting a new. And you might drop in the type of bin there. Uh, you should hear back from us in three to three to five working days or something like that. But it's a really good place to go in and start managing their expectations as to when they're going to hear back from council to say, hey, uh, don't ring us until this time <laughs> until this time's elapsed. That sort of our standard operating environment is when you will hear back from us by then. If you have put in uh, inside the form itself an email field that allows them to complete to fill in their email, you can in fact send an email back to them at this point as well. So you can go in and say, hey, thank you. You can set up that thank you message that shows immediately after they click submit. You can also set up this response email to go back to them to say, thank you for submission. Here's the detail. And you can also customize this one based on the fields inside the form. And you can attach it as a PDF of everything that they included as part of that form itself. So that's just a way to pass it back. Now, one of the little tricks around that that I'll just call out at this point is that if you are, I'm not going to save any of that. If you are adding one of those email fields into the form, so let's just say we, uh, we'll pop it up the top for the time being. We can say, what is your email? If you are wanting to use it to send a response back to the person completing the form, you do want to make sure that you make it required. And you do want to make sure that you've ticked this option inside there that says use this address when emailing your users about submissions. So this just means that our system knows that this is the email address that it should send to uh, as far as it's concerned about the person that has actually um, completed this form. So with those two ticked, I can start to use that settings field inside the system to say, uh, actually, I will save that one. I can start using the settings to send a message back to the to the person that has completed the form and filled in the form to say, thank you for your submission. Here's the details of what you submitted. Here's your next steps as well. So that's another good opportunity to sort of manage their expectations as to when they're going to hear back from council about what they're planning on doing. But Beyond that, with one of our recent releases, we have added the ability to go in and create workflow inside Open Cities, uh, inside Open Forms. So this is basically allowing to you to build out a bit of a process um, that happens in the background of Open Forms once that person's actually submitted that submitted that form and hit response uh, and, and hit submit. What you can do is start to create a bit of a flow internally as to uh, what's going to happen to that form after it has been submitted. So if I go in here now, I can say I want to create a workflow for this particular form and you'll see by default it's created that what's happened is it's with the respondent. So they've filled it in and they've hit submit. It's just in the system now as submitted. And what I want to think about now is, well, what are the other stages that this form can go through? So really what I'm looking at there are the steps. Where does it, where is it, where is this form going to go from, from having been submitted? And I can start to drop some of these steps in. So I might say, well, if it's been submitted as damaged, um, then probably what we want to do is assess that damage so we know uh, what we need to what we need to have in there to send out, and what uh, what what equipment we need to send people out with to fix it, um, and and sort of how easy it's going to be for us to fix timeframes and things like that. We might want someone to review and assess the damage, and we can put in a description here as well. Uh, Determine. Whoops. Determine time frame and tools required. And so I can go in here and I can say, yep, yeah, there's going to be a step where if it's damaged, we want someone to actually assess the damage. And this is where you can select a uh, a reviewer. At the moment, as we saw when we were in the admin and we looked at the users, 
there was only my account, but it's set up as a reviewer. So I do have the option to go in and say, yes, this is the person that's going to actually review that particular phase. So what happens is when, and we'll get on to how you set this up, but when it, when it goes to this step, it's going to email me saying, hey, there's a form uh, that's landed in this step that you need to go and review. But I can go in and I can set up reminders on this step as well. So I can go in and say, hey, if it hasn't been, if it's still sitting there on action within a certain number of days, I want to send out a reminder that says, hey, that form's still sitting there waiting to be actioned. So I can go in and set up reminders on steps as well. But for the time being, I'm just going to do this assess damage step. So I've now got a step where it's first been submitted and then one where we uh, where we're assessing the damage. I might know, yep, yeah, look, if it is in fact being uh, reported as, miss as missing, then we do need to review the documents that have been submitted. Uh, so let's just call this one review supporting documents. Same process as before. I could put in a different reviewer here. If it's someone else that does this review, I can set in a different level of reminder as well. If it's something that requires a different level of, uh, that maybe takes a little bit longer or, or that we give people more time to actually review the, the stat deck and things like that. But I can go in and say, yep, really what we're looking at is assessing the damage or reviewing the supporting information. And then really what I'm looking at, well, uh, what are the final stages that we've got here? What what happens at that point? So if it's a bin repair, what we want to do is say uh, bin repair booked. And I'm going to give it a slightly different color here. So I'm going to make this one green and I'm going to indicate that this is a final state. Once we've uh, once we've booked in the repair, as far as we're concerned, uh, we're finished up with this process. You might want to extend it a few steps, but for this demonstration, demonstration, we're going to say that this is the final step that we go on. And you'll see as soon as I say it's a final step, it's not asking me any asking me for anyone who's going to review it. Basically, at that point, as far as the form is submitted, it is over if it ends up in this step. And then I might want to add another step, which is for the uh, bin replacement uh, ordered. So I might go in and say bin replacement ordered. So if they've reported it as missing um, and we've reviewed all the documents and it all looks good, we might say, yep, now's the time where we book in a, book in a new bin to be delivered to them. This is also a final state. Um, it's also a reasonably good outcome for the client. So I'm going to pick it as pick it as green again here just to uh, give me that visual clue when I'm looking at the workflow that, hey, this is a final stage and we're all done here. And then just in case there is the potential that maybe we look at the supporting documents and the supporting documents aren't aren't sufficient to warrant replacing it or the damage is too great. We could get quite complicated with that, but I'm just going to add one final step and I'm going to make it red. And I'm going to name this one request rejected something wrong with it. And I'll make this one a final state as well, but now it's red. And I can go in and say, yep, request rejected. These are my three final states. These are some intervening, uh, some intermediate steps, and it all starts with the respondent. So now what I want to do is look at the transitions between those states. So what I can do is I can grab that dot on the respondents and I can connect it to the assess damage. And that pops up with this add transition option here. So I can leave that as basic, and then it's definitely going to flow from that first one into that second one. But what I can then do is say, actually, I want to use some smart logic here. So with the so when it, so it going from with the respondent and what I want to do is say in a particular scenario. So this is this is going to the uh, bin repair step. What I want to do is say it moves on to assess damage. When inside the bin details, what happened to your bin is equal damage through use. So we don't need to worry about damage by the truck because that one's uh, not going to be submitted because that's always going to end up in that stop section where it says call the company. But I can go in and say, yes, I want to add a rule, which basically says 
it's equal to if damaged through use, it goes on to that other one. And then what I can also do here is I could add multiple ones. And there's also then a fallback. So because I know there's only two, two options here, I'm just going to use this fallback and say, if it doesn't match this scenario, it should go to the uh, review supporting documents phase because that's going to capture when the, if they've filled in and they haven't selected that damage through use, they've selected that uh, uh, it's completely missing option. But if I had about three or four different ones there, I could set up different scenarios inside here to sort of shift that across with a different fallback associated with them. <coughs> now attached to this as well, you can go in and put in some notifications and send out emails. Now this is again going to require that you do have that email field set up to send it back. But you could send back an email back to the person uh, person who submitted it saying, hey, your account, your thing's being assessed. Now that it's reached this assessed stage, assessment stage, you'll hear from us within this amount of time or something like that. It gives you that option to sort of send something back to someone using it. Um, but inside here, we can go in and say, yep, I want to divvy that workflow up so that if, you, if they submit it, if they pick one option, they go to assess for damage. If they pick a different option, it goes to review the supporting information. And you'll see it's given me a little alert up the top there that's basically telling me it's not going where, anywhere. We've got a dead end here inside our workflow. It's got to end in a, in a stop, in, in a state that's, that's sort of a final state. And that's where I can say, yep, once we've assessed the damage, someone inside the system is going to shift it into this uh, bin repair book state. We can again send notifications out associated with this. So um, this might be where you're sending something back to the back to the customer saying, hey, uh, you've uh, your bins, bin repair has been booked in for this date. Please make sure someone's home or something like that. You can drop in that sort of uh, notification sitting there. Uh, bin And we can go into this uh, review supporting documents. And do the same thing. <laughs> uh, let's just say request approved for this one. And just to show you how it could work, we can add a second one coming out here. It's going to allow them to record to decline that request or reject that request in there. Then I can click save and then I can click save and preview. And what we'll see is it hasn't changed the front end form at all. But if I go in and I drop in uh, an email address, and I fill in this form and I say it was been damaged through use, or well, let's say I say it was missing, I haven't made any of these, I haven't made that a required field, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm still going to have to show that I'm not a robot. Didn't customize that thank you message, but you'll see it's now said, hey, that that's in there at report two. Now this one's unpublished. So if I go back and have a look here, um, there's nothing up there for me to review as yet. Oh no, it has gone through. It's <laughs> all right, we've got it set up to allow that one through even in test. Um, so what you see is that it's now come through. So I've got an email in my system saying, hey, this form has come through for me to review inside the system. And I can click on this one here and you'll see what it gives me is then, hey, this is the form that's been submitted. It's been submitted uh, because it's missing, and they haven't they haven't added any uh, supporting documents to to do that. So then I can then action this request down the bottom. 
So if I click down here, you'll see that I've got the two options based on what was filled in on that uh, on that previous workflow screen as to I can either approve it from here or decline it from here. Um, because they haven't submitted any supporting documents, more than likely what I'm going to do then is sit down and say, yeah, no, nah, sorry, we don't want to do that. We're going to decline it. And this is where you'll see that, hey, it's just a note, this transaction doesn't include an email back to response respondent get back into the day. So we could set up that workflow to send back an email on the reject to say, hey, there's been this issue and sort of explain some of that. We can do that if we have that set up. Then also here we have the ability to do a bit of a uh, bit of a tweak to that email before it goes back to the client. But ultimately we can go in there and we can say confirm. It's going to take that out of workflow because now it's in one of those final states. And it's then going to appear sitting inside my actioned area here. So it's going to tell me that, hey, one of these requests came, a request came through on my test form and I approved it. A request came through on my damaged bin form and I rejected that one. And if I need to, I can go back and look at what's actually happened with within that form to say, hey, this is the this is the situation with this. And there's then this review history sitting up the top. So if we go back to this, uh, back to my workspace here, if I switch back to the uh, waste and recycling section, this is my damaged bin form sitting here. When I go back into this, uh, what you'll see is it's still in draft mode at the moment, so I haven't actually gone through and published this all the way through. Um, when I'm happy with this form and I've decided that, yep, it's got everything that I need, I can then hit this publish option. And you'll see it gives me a publish now or a schedule for later here. So if I know it's not going to be used until uh, a certain point in the future, I can go in and say, don't publish until this particular date, don't make it available until this particular date. Um, or I can go in and say, it just needs to be available right away. And I can drop in a note. And this is really just for people within the organization so they can tell what's changed in this form, why you might have made that update. Um, but I can go away and I can click Publish Now. And it's going to give me two things. It's going to give me a live link to the form inside Open Cities that we can send out to people to fill in the form. And it's going to give me a chunk of embed code that I can drop into a system that can handle embed code. Um, also publishing a form, if you do have it linked directly to your Open Cities uh, platform, it will appear in the drop down once you hit publish. Um, but this embed code allows you to embed it basically into any system within uh, any online system that, that allows you to include embed, embed code. You should really be able to drop that, uh, that embed code into the system. And finally, if we go and have a look at responses inside this form, I've possibly been talking too long and it's logged me out. There we go. You'll see that it's it's given us a few. You can see that this first form was completed before I submitted that workflow in test mode. The second one has been submitted after the workflow and you'll see it's indicating here um, what the actual outcome of that particular form was. But this is where all of my forms will sort of gather as they've been submitted. I can start to filter it based on date or by searching. And I can go in here and start to export uh, all of the results or, or the filtered results that I've got here um, in a couple of different formats to actually manage. Or I can download as a, as a PDF um, that individual response as well. But it also gives me a quick little link to jump through to the workflow history to see actually what happened with that particular page inside the site. You'll also note that once I've actually gone in and published that form, it adds this bar across the top that says it's active. You're not going to make any, not going to be able to make any changes until you click edit. So that's just to make sure I don't go in and change anything uh, without meaning to. But if I've decided, yes, I do want to uh, add in some extra fields or expand a bit on the information that's been provided for um, the missing or damaged truck, uh, the damaged by truck option, I can then just go back in and click edit. For those of you on Enterprise, what you'll then see is inside the History tab, there will still be that version 1, and then there'll be a version 2 draft. And I can go in and I can start to adjust the different settings. Um, 
So in here, there's a few other bits and pieces that we might want to look at. If it's a very small form, um, then you might not need to give people the ability to save process. Uh, sorry, save progress. And you might not want to force them to click out, click on the capture option immediately. You can turn that off for this form and say, actually, it's going to be all right. Um, I don't think we're going hit, to get hit by a heap of spam. If you do want to go back and turn that on, then you can actually go back in and turn that on at a later date. Um, if you do find that you need to do that. There's a few other bits and pieces as far as um, putting a prefix attached to that receipt number. So if that's going to help you in process things internally or when someone rings up and says, hey, I want to talk to you about receipt number 23, um, it might be useful for you to have a bit of a prefix sitting behind that. But look, as I said at the beginning of this one, really looking this time to give you uh, a broad overview of some of the advanced features, some of the neat things you can do by combining sections and smart logic and smart logic and uh, the show hide logic and the workflows as well. Um, there are lots more settings inside the settings area that we could look at and could talk about. So in here, you can also overrule some of those button text and things like that within the system. Um, and there's some tweaks you can make to the display. Again, a lot of the basics are there just to, uh, the oh, sorry, not the basics, the presets are there to uh, make sure it's a fairly smooth user experience with things like displaying that progress bar running across the top. But there are situations where you might want to go into a form and say, actually, we don't want to display each section individually, or actually, we don't want to display the um, we don't want to display the progress bar at the top because it's a really short form and it's just taking up valuable space. Um, you can go in and sort of adjust some of those settings sort of directly in, for individual forms within the system as well. Also, once we've published, we'll have a link to the published form sitting at the top and it'll give you that little clue up the top there as to if it's in draft mode. But that was a quick little build of quite a smart little form inside our system now that uh, takes not that not only steps uh, a member of the public through uh, asking them a few clarifying questions, but also then sort of provides a, a sort of internal process as well for you to go through and demonstrate that, um, hey, we know what's happened with this particular form and how it's been progressed and processed inside the system. So that is it for today's open form session. As I mentioned at the outset, we will have uh, a recording of this up on the Open Cities Help Centre in the not too distant future. Um, stay tuned, there should be another monthly uh, refresher course uh, at the end of this month. That one will be back to Open Cities and it will either be the, the site management or the uh, content editing refresher training. I hope you have all gained something useful out of today's session. Thank you very much for your time.